Hey sewing friends! So I'm really excited to show you my two new Rhapsodies. One is a blouse, one is a dress. And you know, I've made this a couple of times now that I have actually really perfected the fit on these. So I am really excited to keep going forward and making the other versions with all the other sleeve options. In fact, after I show you the two that I've made, I'll show you the fabric and the versions that I wanna make for my next two Rhapsodies. And I gotta tell you guys, Thank you so much. I mean, you all have said how much you've made two, or you're working on your fourth, or you've made two for you, and you're making two for your daughter or your daughter-in-law. I mean, obviously, Love Notions really knocked this out of the park, because all of you who have said how much you like the pattern, I totally get it, because I love the pattern, too, and I do plan on making more myself. So first, let me show you. This is the third one I made, and it is the one with the I guess the three-quarter bell sleeve or flare I think they called it a three-quarter with a flare and the fabric I made or I used is a Lady McElroy and this one I included the ties on it so I don't know how well you can see it as I hold it up I'll put some video or some pictures on there and here is the sleeve with the little Flare. Because of the pattern, you really don't see where that seam is, so you don't really see the, the delineation between where the sleeve and the flare is. But what I do like about this uh, Rhapsody is the fit. So I finally learned through trial and error that for this particular pattern, I need to size down to a large for my shoulders, chest, and waist, and then grade out to an extra large at the hips. And if I'm sewing this pattern with a viscose, that is the perfect size for me. If I'm going to sew it with, let's say, a cotton lawn or a poplin or something that has less give, it has more structure, then I would make the same size, but I would also add a half inch um, full bust adjustment because I just want a little bit more room in the bust. Not enough that I need to go up a size because then it's gonna fall off my shoulders and it's gonna be a little bit too, too big in the shoulder area. But um, just keep it at the size large and then just do a half inch full bust adjustment. And actually, Rachel, thank you so much. You're the one who gave me that idea because you said that you do the same adjustment on your Rhapsodies that you do. You put in a dart, close the dart, and rotate it into the gathers at the shoulders. And as soon as you said that, made so much sense, and I knew that was what I needed to do when I'm making the Rhapsody in a cotton lawn or a poplin or, you know, a, a, a less drapey fabric that has less give. So, moving on, whew, that was a mouthful. I went ahead and made the dress version with the flutter sleeve. And again, I'll try and put some video up there, or some pictures up, because I gotta tell you, I absolutely love, 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 love this dress, and I love this fabric. This is a rayon that um, from an art gallery rayon that I bought from Hawthorne, fabric Hawthorne Supply Company and I just love it it is so light and cool now it is a little see-through so I did add a lining for the skirt just so there's no you know embarrassing moment if I'm standing in the Sun but I absolutely love this dress and plan on making a couple more now I went ahead and made this you know with the elastic but I have about a quarter inch, or excuse me, a quarter yard of fabric left over. And what I think I want to do is make a tie. Because even though I, you know, I wore it to work and it was fine. Um, and I got compliments on it too. I think people were, I think they, they, they liked the fabric, but they also liked the look and the shape of the dress as well. So yeah, this, this one was a good one. And I think I just want to add a tie to wear instead, because I think it'll just add a little bit more to rather than just have the waist, the elastic um, at the waist. But another thing I did, which isn't included in the pattern instructions, is I went ahead just on this version and then I'll do this going forward. Because this is a technique that when I took my Taylor Academy classes, we started every project with um, stabilizing the neckline and the arms. 
the armholes and really any place where you felt you needed stabilization. So here on this, as you could see, I added half inch stay tape around the neckline and the armholes. And I'll show you what I use. I'm not affiliated with this in any way. It's just a product that I really like is this so easy. Oh, this is the knit stay tape, but I also have their woven stay tape. And what I like about this is it did stabilize the neckline because you'll see on the pattern how they show the neck kind of falling open here. And what I don't like about that is that, you know, on, let's say, a viscose or a rayon, the print is just printed onto the front of the fabric, but the inside is different. So in order to keep this from falling open, I went ahead and added the stay tape around the neckline and the arms. And of course, you know, these are curves. Your neck is a curve, your armhole is a curve, and as you know, when you do a curve, you eventually get, get part of that cut on the bias. And if it's on the bias, then you know that it's gonna have a little bit more stretch. So I think that everything, you should either stay stitch or use some stay tape or some sort of light interfacing or something to stabilize any area where you have a curve in your pattern and you don't want any stretch. But that's just me. That's just me and how I sew. So now that I've got the fit down, I am going to go ahead and go forward with the two other versions. And let me show you the two that I plan on making and the fabric that I plan on using to make them with. So the next one is going to be this one with the cap sleeve. Okay, this is what they consider the short sleeve and this is the cap sleeve. And the fabric that I want to use for this one, hold on just a moment, is this viscose. And it has sort of a ditzy print. Now, I don't know if you can see it or how it's showing up, if it's black or if you can see the blue, but this is actually a blue background with a white kind of daisy flower with a little red um, center. And then there are some little specks of purple and gold or yellow mixed in here as well. So I thought that would make a cute cap sleeved version. And so that I don't just make a rhapsody for the sake of making a rhapsody, you know, I want to don't want to have uh, a bunch of orphans <laughs> in my closet. I thought I would pair that with a white denim skirt, the itch to stitch new pattern that just came out. And so I'll use this white denim that I've had in my stash and make, I forget what it's called, I think this is it the Takaro or something. I'll go ahead and write the name of the pattern. Um, but it's their new itch to stitch denim skirt pattern that was just released, I think a week or two ago. So that will pair with this Rhapsody. And then the other version I plan on making this week is the, I guess this kind of, it's not a short sleeve, but a mid sleeve, I guess, with this little cuff on the end of it. So it'll be this version, and this one I will add the tie. This one will not have the tie, but this one will have the tie. And the fabric that I want to use on this is this viscose from, again, from Lady McElroy. And I don't particularly love this fabric, but it had dogs on it, and I own two little dogs, so <laughs> that's what made me want to, to get this. And as I was, I was at work and I was thinking about this because, again, I don't know if you can see, but this dog has a little bit, it's kind of a reddish dark maroon or a dark wine color. And I remember this fabric that I had bought and I was making a dress like maybe, I don't know, three, four years ago. And it just wasn't working for me. It wasn't a good pattern for me. So I have slowly through the years been unpicking it and trying to decide what I can do with the fabric. So here's the fabric. It's a very nice linen viscose blend that I had gotten from my local Joanne store. And it's not a perfect match, but I was hoping I have enough of this fabric to make a pair of kind of linen shorts and then pair it with this fabric with the Rhapsody top. 
So as I said, it's not a perfect match, but I think it's a close enough match that it would make a nice outfit that I would feel very comfortable wearing in the summertime and hopefully on vacation. Now, my dress, my Rhapsody dress that I made, I got a lot of compliments at work, so that made me feel really good. And my boss kind of came around my desk and was asking me about it. So I said, would you like me to make you <laughs> your dress? And she does. So I'm real excited about that because, you know, I, I like the idea of being able, her, she, her body shape is different from mine. And so her proportions are a little different. So I like the challenge of being able to take pattern and then adjust it to fit her. And I'm hoping I can make her a dress that she will really like and want to wear. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my Rhapsody journey so far. And once I get all nine of them done, I'll go ahead and put together a video and do a little fashion show <laughs> of all the versions that I've done. So that's all that I have for this week. I hope you're doing well, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.